about here? I'm going to give you a case number right now. Okay. So if you have to call back 911 at any time, that this case number is going with this call. And the case number is 15. 15. 084. 084. 594. 594. Okay. So. Yep. Hello. Hi, it's Terry there. Who is this? Oh, okay. And you're, you. are you an officer? Yep, I'm Officer Robertson. How can I help you today? Yes, uh, I submitted a data request to Board Chair uh, Judy Salinga Punko, uh, ISD 79 uh, Board Chair, on March 27th, 2015. I have a recording of the, con of the message I left on her machine. Pursuant to state statute, all I have to do is uh, put them on notice that I uh, made a data request. Uh, Superintendent Grunseth has willfully refused to uh, even acknowledge my data request or uh, send me my data. And it's a criminal act to illegally withhold free electronic information. Uh, let's see. And I've been in contact with the Prior Lake School District where Mr. Grunseth, Mr. Grunseth is uh, applying for the superintendent job. I contacted them on March 31st, 2015, and uh, that same day they sent me the affidavit of its candidacy for the for their school district. So, uh, you know, apparently there's a difference between, you know, their superintendent, uh, Groover, who has no problem following the law, apparently has no problem following the law, and uh, Superintendent Grunseth, who has a history of Ill illegal withholding uh, free electronic information, not only from me, but from uh, board member Art Johnston, who on, uh, let's see, I have the resolution that he tried to pass on December 22nd, 2014. It's H.R. 12-14-3223. He and board member Welty tried to pass a resolution to have an investigation into the school for their practices of illegal withholding free electronic information. And, and of course, uh, board member Harla, Loeffler, Kemp, Mernicke, Salinga Punko, and Westrum, Westholm uh, voted against that. And of course, uh, Johnston and Welty voted for it. So, uh, you know, apparently there's some of the board members who acknowledge the fact that a criminal act is being perpetrated by the superintendent, has a history of illegal withholding free electronic information, and the other board members are apparently conspiring with Superintendent Grunseth to cover up the fact that free electronic information, uh, free electronic public information is being illegally withheld. So that's why I want to file the complaint. It's, again, it's a misdemeanor to illegal withhold public information is criminal misconduct for a public public official to willfully refuse to do their job and of course submitting uh, processing data requests for free electronic information is his superintendent punk or a uh, superintendent Grunseth's job wow um that was a lot in just two or three brief minutes so what information are you trying to is it something that was police related that I would have access to or was it something that was just strictly with the school board? Well, it's it's the affidavits of candidacy for the Duluth school board members, which is public information. It has their, you know, home address. It, it acknowledges the fact that um, it has a phone number on it. You know, it has all their, their personal information that well, they're required to produce public information to prove that they're a valid candidate for school board, you see? And so was there, was there someone specific information that you're looking for? Yes, it's called the Affidavit of Candidacy, which I, which I did receive from the Prior Lake School District. They had no problem sending me their information on their board members, but uh, Superintendent Grunseth and Board Chair Punko don't want to send me this free electronic information on, on their board members. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so there's some specific information on the school board that you are trying to obtain, and you're trying to you're going through ground test, but she's not giving you the information. Well, I left the message with board chair Punko. It's her job to relay it to Superintendent Grunseth. See, it's chain of command, just like you have chain of command at the yep. at the police department. So that's the thing. I mean, that it's legal responsibility for the board chair to pass it on to Grunseth. Neither Grunseth nor Punko are acknowledging receipt of the uh, the data request nor processing the data request okay and I received an unsolicited uh, email from 
board ch uh, board member uh, Welty. Let's see, that was on April 17th, 2015, and he acknowledged receipt of my video, which uh, my audio recording of my conver my message that I left on board chair Punko's uh, voicemail. So he has acknowledged the fact that he's received it, and I did send it to the other board members, so there's no, no reason why any of them shouldn't know that I've submitted a data request and board uh, chair Punko and, and uh, Grant Seth are willfully refusing to produce the data. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Have you con contacted an attorney? I don't need to contact an attorney. I'm contacting you because it's a criminal act to illegal withhold free electronic information. Okay. So there's going to have to be quite a bit more to this process. Um, I honestly don't even know where exactly to begin. If I were you, I would definitely contact an attorney. Well, first and of all... I am, I, I am going to contact one of my supervisors to see where exactly this all starts because it's it's not as cut and dry as, as the typical things that patrol officers respond to. So I just need to ask a few questions of my supervisor and I will give you a call back. Okay, well, the thing is, it's apparently it's extremely cut and dry. That's why you want to talk to a supervisor, because it's no different than any other crime that you investigate. You you investigate the you know from the beginning to the end. I've given you the my the data that I have of how I contacted the board chair. I gave you the date. I gave you the the mode, which is a is an audio recording. So there's clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence that I've contacted board chair. Punko, I've given you clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence that Harry Welty, a board member, has contacted me on April 17th, 2015, acknowledging the receipt of that communication. So uh, I don't see, and, and, and again, it's a criminal act to illegal withhold free electronic information, plus uh, the Prior Lake School District has already given me that same information. They had absolutely no problem with it. In fact, some of the information is on their website. So again, and it's also a matter of the public record that uh, you know, uh, board member Art Johnston and Harry Welty were trying to pass a resolution to have an, an, a criminal investigation or an investigation, administrative investigation, into uh, ISD 709's habit of illegal withholding free electronic information. See, so, that, so, so this is just a little bit different. That's just like if somebody's not paying their child support, I can't force them to pay their child support. They have to get an attorney. No, no, so there no. has to be some proof right now and there's there's about four or five people that you just mentioned that would need to be talking like talked to and spoken to and whatnot and, and I need to have proof that something illegal occurred. Do you know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's just not always as easy as calling a police officer to prove that. Sometimes it's actually gonna have to be going to court with an attorney. Okay, so you're saying a civil action when it's a criminal action. I already I'm not, I, I already I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm saying I need to give my supervisor a call to see just what exactly we're looking for here and what avenue to take on this. This is something that's new for me. Okay. Well, frankly, probably most patrol officers. So well, I'm asking if you've just contacted an attorney to see what your attorney says because your attorney, attorney could give you some pretty good advice as well. Well, I'm sure if I was dumb enough to hire an attorney, he would say that I should file a criminal complaint because it's a criminal act to illegal withhold free electronic information. And it's a criminal act for a public official to willfully refuse to do their job. See, that's why uh, I'm sure that attorney that I would spend lots of money on would say when I called the police, which I'm doing now, to record the conversation so that I'd have proof of the officer willfully refusing to investigate, which, of course, sounds like what you're trying to do. See, because that's what I am doing. I, am, I have recorded this phone conversation. I'm recording it right now. So I... And that, and that fine i fully expected that you were going to but what i'm saying to you is, is i need to call my supervisor to this is something that's new like i've said before and i will give you a call back to see exactly which avenue i need to go down is what i'm saying to you well that's fine what's what's your name your supervisor the, uh sergeant Mickus is the person who i'm going to be calling okay sergeant what's this first name Sergeant Mikis. 
Okay, I need to have you spell his first name or her first name and then her last name, or his last name. Andy, A-N-D-Y, Mikus, M-I-C-K-U-S. M-I-C-K-U-S. Yep. And what's his badge number? You know, I, I don't know my sergeant's badge number right off the top of my head. You'll have to hold on. Uh, hold on a second. How about if you tell me your rank, your first name, and your last name again, please? Okay, so I have a question for you. Well, how about why you? Am, how about why you? am I being interrogated on the phone for trying to help you? Oh, well, uh, the thing is, I'm not interrogating you. I'm asking you reasonable questions. Okay, so you need to hold on a second so I can look up my sergeant's badge number because I can't do both things at the same time and talk on the phone and open up a book at the same time. That's fine. You're just going to have to hold on one second. Sure. Three five seven, and then what was yep. what was your rank again? I'm a patrol officer. Patrol, and then what was your first name again? My last name is Robertson, and my pin number is four eight five. Robertson four eight five pin number is that same thing as your badge number? Yep. And are you going to be able to be reached at this phone number in the next probably five to ten minutes so I can get a hold of my sergeant? Yes, I will be around for the next five or ten minutes. Thank you. Bye. Circumstances in which the school board did not vote to waive the attorney client privilege. Secondly, Mr. Welty has been advised on several occasions of the importance of data privacy. The above described conduct demonstrates that Mr. Welty abdicated his responsibilities as a member of the school board in favor of his personal interest. Second. Was seconded by Member Welty. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by Member Welty and upon a roll call. Uh, we will have a vote, but first we are going to have a uh, discussion. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded for the motion. Member Johnston. I see what's going on here again. I see our attorney standing up there making it as twenty-five or three thousand uh, dollars for this trip up here. I also understand that he was the one that recommended that we throw in the, the racist comment for me and the charges against me. That, that's I think that, uh, let's just that, stick with uh, the let's just stick with the resolution. Well, well since this attorney has also drafted this one, I think he's suspecting right. that when he's making. Twenty-five to three thousand dollars. It was pretty disgusting. I think people in this community should know how much money we're paying attorneys. We paid him, I believe, sixty thousand dollars this year. At least two twenty thousand dollars went against me. Who knows how much this is going to be after that? So I think the public should know that the attorney that's representing this uh, district has a, is is actually an ambulance chaser. He's going everything okay, he can, throwing not, things like racist resort, comments. Please, please do not resort. Uh, uh, I do have to uh, finish up. Uh, yes, I do. I'm going to uh, make a motion to delete and substitute this amendment. No. Uh, yes, I am. Motion. You can. You can. You can I'm making a motion to delete, delete and substitute. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the resolution. That I'm substituting. One resolution: investigation of the district lack of compliance with Government Data Practices Act. Whereas on February 26, 2013, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, St. Louis County, concerning increases in cost of the long run facility plan, soft costs of the long run facility plan, the soft costs, change orders, energy and sustainability designs, and compliance with that. This request has only been partially, almost not at all, complied with. Whereas on April 24, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, Concerning change orders between ISD 709 and Johnson Controls Incorporated. Whereas on August 11, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, St. Louis County requesting all email, documents, memos, notes, call logs, and meetings involving any school board member, any attorneys, the superintendent, and his cabinet containing Art Johnson or Jane Bushy from September 5, 2013 to the present. 
Whereas August 18, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, requesting all communication between ISD 709, Attorney Kevin Rupp, Flinsky, Mark, and Johnson, and any contacts with the firm Flinsky, Mark, and Johnson containing to the investigation looking into the allegation concerning member Art Johnston, and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. Whereas on August 18, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709, uh, requesting all communications, including email, memos, documents, notes, call logs, and meeting between Independent School District 709, superintendent, or his cabinet, including a staff, a staff, including Lincoln Park Middle School administration, and any school board members concerning the elimination of community outreach program, and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. Whereas on September 2nd, 2014, a request was submitted to Independent School District 709 requesting all communication between its employees, elected officials, agents of Independent School District 709 on one hand, the officers, employees, agents of Johnson Controls on the other hand, concerning the subject matter of change orders entered into between ISC 709 and Johnson Controls dated January 13th, 2012 and November 30th, 2009 and the fact that ISD has not responded to that request. Therefore, be it resolved, the school board hereby authorizes their investigation into why these Government Data Practices Act have not been complied with, with the investigation to be conducted by the law firm Dryle, Swarlarski, Knudsen, and Parmerville, L.T. Second. Any hey, for the seconded by uh, Member Welty. All in favor, say aye. Mr. Chairman, this requires discussion. Okay, discussion. Um, Blocker Kemp, did you want to discuss this or? Yeah, I'm not this. Okay, we'll stick to the amendment. Um, Mayor Sligapunko, did you want, didn't want to get no, your I just button up? To, to okay, the resolution. we'll go to that. And Member Johnston. Sure, the reason I'm doing this is that I think that it's important that the public know. Uh, and also other school board members that pretend they don't know that this school administration, the superintendent, staff of this administration, including the school board, have repeatedly, repeatedly violated the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act with no impunity whatsoever, without even responding. I think I listed uh, six of these. I had one, uh, one, uh, one brief thing. I got one paragraph back on the other one. Uh, other one said, oh, we'll respond here any time. has been uh, three months. Other one has been uh, over a year. And I think that to have this board go forward uh, with such outlandish actions against a, a board member when they themselves repeatedly, repeatedly violate the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act is really unconscionable. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking people to vote for this. If they want to have this district comply with Government Data Practices Act, uh, that we should vote in favor of this amendment to finally make things right in this district. Member Welty? I find this a very surprising and interesting amendment. I do not predict that it will pass, but it has to do with the subject of the first resolution, which is information, what should be made available to the public. Uh, the original resolution uh, calls for the censure of me for releasing information, and I'll have comments to make should this uh, amendment fail, but I do think that Member Johnston has made a very good point. This school district, administration, school board, has lived and died by the withholding of information on the assumption that any bad information whatsoever is, is looking backwards. And I have been aware of many requests by Art Johnson over the course of four years, and before him, two years worth of Gary Glass's uh, requests, and they have been routinely denied. And when people are routinely denied access to what should be public information, for instance, where $84 million of public spending went on soft costs, it leads to suspicions. And this is a school district, it is 
desperately in need of building trust with the public. And I have sympathized with Art Johnson, even when I was not terribly happy with him a few years ago, uh, because he has constantly asked for information, such as these most recent examples, which should be made available public, made, made available to him at some reasonable way, perhaps, perhaps with some charges, but he has constantly been denied. And yet I have been called on the carpet because I have, I think, quite reasonably been found guilty or will soon be found guilty. I'll find myself guilty of releasing information that I know I should not have, have, have released. In fact, I intend to vote for the censure motion, although there are some points of it I would like to ask about. But I do think Member Johnson is, and I will reiterate, completely right in making a point that when the school board acts in a capricious fashion and only releases that data which it wants to and actively encourages the administration to withhold other public data from a minority, it is not acting in the best interests of our community, our schools, or our children. Member Johnson? Sir, sure, I'd just like to add to that, Mr. Wolf, you reminded me of the issue that we got that was written by our uh, attorney Rupp that was sent out by uh, Bill Hansen to us on the cover letter of this 67-page uh, report about me. I said, anybody violating this such a Data Practice Act request of the Minnesota Government Data Practice Act is liable for a $15,000 fine. Of course, I've been waiting to have the superintendent be given a, a fining himself $15,000 and also remember here two months ago when our human resource director violated Data Practice Act talking about my marital status and an employee's marital status. I've been expecting to get $15,000 or $30,000 a school shouldn't be having now, so I'm certainly looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, I'm saying that somewhat facetiously because knowing this board and the superintendent, this administration, that certainly probably won't happen. But it should be happening. So instead, this board is going after member Welty uh, for a censorship thing. He's already admitted publicly that maybe that wasn't such a good thing to, to say. But I think that uh, here we have blatant things where our own, our own uh, financial director says that uh, that people, uh, two people that I've mentioned, not Mr. Welty, should be given $15,000 fines and nothing is happening whatsoever. It's been very surprising that nothing happens. But yet I, I uh, hear on Saturday morning that, hey, we're going to have a suddenly a, a meeting on Monday. That this, I, think it was, I think it was done in the just of Christmas spirit, so that was, that was really nice. Uh, I think that... Um, I would also like to make, the, again, uh, on this one, I think that uh, here if we have an investigation into the superintendent, I think that is long, long overdue, and I think this would get us back on the right track as a board to have transparency, and moving forward, finally, to have some accountability and transparency that these people in this community are really getting a little bit tired of going after the superintendent and five or is it three board members going after other ones. I think it's really unconscionable and uh, it would be a good uh, statement finally to make it to the public that yes, we're going to finally do something right and, uh, and uh, have an investigation into the superintendent. Member Welty? Uh, thank you, Member Johnston. I guess I would make this comment if it is true, and I suspect it is, that the uh, Director of Human Relations and the superintendent have released uh, data private information, then I am in very good company indeed. All in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. All opposed say aye. No. No. Okay. Let's do this one more time. There's a motion to amend. All in favor of amending the motion or of, of the amendment motion signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, no, no, no. That fails five to two to five. Okay, we'll vote.